Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a primitive bushcraft hide working, woodworking, bone working primitive tool made from flint. This is not a commonly made stone tool now, but thousands of years ago it was in everybody's toolkit. If you're into primitive technology, primitive skills, primitive uh, hide working, primitive woodworking, stuff along those lines, you're definitely gonna wanna know how to make one of these. Yes, these were one of the most important pieces of a Paleo-Indian toolkit from 12,000, 11,000 years ago. You might think it looks very unassuming and small, but this is one of their most important tools. This is how they kept themselves warm. This is how they made their clothes. This is how they shaped their tools. So stick around. I'm gonna show you how to make this really important survival tool. One of the things you want is a pretty thick piece of flint because your end scraper has to be a very um, thick flake with steep edges. So I got this yesterday while I was looking around for flint. And this is a good piece because uh, how flat this is, it'll make it easier. If I hit in right here, I should be able to get this whole flake off and then I could show you how to make the end scraper out of that. I'm going to try my new antler billet to try to take the flake off. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna use a hammer stone. So what you wanna do is support this really strong squeeze and you find a ledge that's gonna provide a very steep, thick flake. We'll try it right here, it might take a few tries this doesn't work, I'll use a uh, hammer stone. Try again. Try this piece here. So that'll work. This steep edge here is good. This steep edge here is also good. What I'm gonna have to do is just break off these corners and it, it should be about that wide when I'm finished. So let's see. Good. Okay. Try to be very gentle. Just to shape the back end. So what I was just doing was shaping the bottom end because um, I have a feeling a lot of these were put into a handle to scrape with because the back end is always thin for the most part. Sometimes it's not, but it's usually thin and then with that steep ridge at the top. Now if you compare here, it's getting pretty close. I do have to do some more shaping on it. But this will work as is already, but I do want to make it a little more refined. So what I'm doing here is not uh, completely necessary, but I like my stuff to look pretty. So that's already, it's already the basic shape. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to use um, 
You could use a tiny antler to do this, to simulate this, but this is copper. So I'm just thinning this a little to make it so that it could fit on a stick if I wanted it to. I'm going to use an um, indirect method just to thin that a little bit. So this is called a uh, Ishi stick. It's got a piece of copper in the tip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the platform where I want to knock a flake off and I'm going to hit it with an antler. It drives the flakes further and it's a, a little more refined for like delicate work. Instead of using the billet, you could use this and it's uh, more controllable. So what I do is I put it under my leg like that and then I line up where I want to hit. So right there, I'm going to try to take a flake off. And this is the piece I wanted to get off. There was a big, ugly, ugly bump. Now I just want to get rid of this little piece. Same thing. Now that's cleaned up. And then I just want to get rid of this bulb at the end here. Okay. All right, so now we got the basic shape going. There's one more piece I would like to take off right there, so I'm gonna do that real quick. So I just took this off with the indirect. There, that thicker part. <clears throat> and now you got the, the scraper edge here. So this could fit into a stick with some primitive glue or you could use it by hand. And let's say I want to peel some bark off of this. You're going to take this edge here. So once you finish the shape, there is one more step you have to do, but you don't have to do it right away. Take this edge here, and if you draw it down in a scraping motion, you can see peels the wood off. So they use these a lot. They, they use them on um, antler, on bone, on wood, and to scrape hides. So this can be used to shape their, their spears, their hides, uh, any number of things. But um, once this edge gets dull here, what they did, it's dull and it's not doing its cutting job anymore. They had the ver a very interesting way of resharpening it, and they would take an antler, and push in, and flake down, like straight into there. How I popped the flake off there. And then they would do the next one. And then the next one. All the way across. I switched to uh, copper just because it's thinner. 
then that is really thick. I have to sharpen that up. But it's the same thing. You just push in. And now that's resharpened. So now that it's resharpened on this edge, straight up the face. If you look, it's flat. Where I put those flakes across is a flat edge. And that's what you want. Now it's sharp again. So, imagine this on, on a stick, and this has a ton of fat on it, and you saw how that took the bark off and, you know, the outer layer of that wood, and it would just be dragged down the hide and scraping everything off, like that. As you use, as you do that, this edge gets polished. And I'm sure a lot of um, a lot of these have polished edges when they're found. So the most important thing for these to be effective is this completely flat edge here that you're going to flake to sharpen this way up the piece. And as you do that more and more, it'll get shorter and shorter. I'm sure a lot of these will like this long when they were first made. And as you use them, they get shorter and shorter. The other thing about these is... Um, they have found gun flints for muskets very similar to this. And how they would be used is they would clamp into the trigger like this. And when you, when you fire, it shoots it down, hits a piece of metal to create a big spark, which lights the gun, the gunpowder, which sets the bullet in motion. But this kind of edge was also used in gun flints to strike. There might be something about that, about gun flints, coming up soon, maybe. So with these, these were one of the most important pieces of a Paleo-Indian toolkit from 12,000, 11,000 years ago. And uh, they had a lot of these. There was, um, on, on the Paleo-Indian sites, there's many, many, many of these found. And you might think it looks very unassuming and small, but this is one of their most important tools. This is how they kept themselves warm. This is how they made their clothes. This is how they shaped their tools. You could use it on wood. You could use it on bone. You could use it on hides. <clears throat> yeah. Once you scrape all that fat off the hide, you could gather that fat and use it for other, for other methods, maybe even fire starting. You could light the fat, almost like a uh, like an oil lamp. Now the other tool that they had pretty often, not as often. Now this is the same kind of material, but there's a fluted point. There's a there's a flake going straight up the center to get it to fit in to where you're tying it. So you see stuff like this on on Paleo Indian sites right alongside these things. So they're hunting with these, and then they're processing the game with these. Probably using these to skin it and cut it up and butcher the game, but the finer work, you're gonna be using something like that. If you're into primitive technology, primitive skills, primitive uh, hide working, primitive woodworking, stuff along those lines, you're definitely gonna wanna know how to make one of these. And I'll demonstrate it one more time, just take the bark off of this. And it's delicate enough that you can use it on something that thin and shave it down to the size you want. And that's good so that you don't poke a hole through your hide when you're working on it. Especially on a 
maybe areas around the thin parts of the hide when you're using this. It'll work just like I'm showing you here. You're able to just very, very finely take the bark off of this. So we took this flake off here. You could see where, where it met up. And that's kind of the angle you're looking for when you make these, when it peels up like that. You have that working edge for the hide scraping. I thinned out the base so that we could tie it onto a branch for more leverage if we're working on things. When you're using it by hand, you can't put as much pressure as you can with a handle, but it'll still work like this. It'll still even work antler. You see those shavings coming off. And it's still sharp. So just a final recap is you take a, a long flake that has a steep edge like that, you flake it straight in to sharpen it, you shape the sides, you thin the base to fit into a handle, and then you have your hide scraping tool. And this is called a end scraper. It's just, this is a Paleo Indian tool from a Paleo Indian tool kit. This is what they carried on them at their camps when they were doing their camp chores and working on their, their hide working, leather working, woodworking, even bone working, working on bone with these. They use these for all those things. Just a simple little tool. So thanks for sticking around, watching us create this primitive survival tool. We'll be making more stuff like this and demonstrating how it works and why it works. And stick around, hit that sub button hit the thumbs up and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when I upload because a lot of people aren't seeing it and you miss out on stuff like this. See you guys.